You're listening to the Author Stories Podcast. Bringing you the story behind the stories and the storytellers. Margaret Wyatt, Terry Brooks, Sheena Kamal, Matthew Quick, JT Ellison, Walt D. Williams, Brad Ford, Corey, Dr. O, Brandon Sanders, Robin Mock, Ernest Klein, Jim Butcher, Sherwin Harris. Visit HankGarner.com for archives of all the shows. Today's guest is Faith Thomas and Javin Bonds. It's episode 229 of the Author Stories Podcast. I'm your host, Hank Garner. Thanks for joining me today. And uh, today is the first day of October, and man, is it a packed month for podcasting. We have so many shows uh, booked for you. Normally, we do two shows a week, Tuesday and Friday, and we're going to have uh, three or four episodes every week in October, and uh, maybe going forward, uh, Dawn, who has been scheduling the show, has done such a phenomenal job. Uh, we just have more shows than we can uh, than we can schedule out, so that's a, a great problem to have and a great thing for you, the listening audience. Uh, I've got some new sponsors for October, and I'm going to tell you about them tomorrow on our Tuesday show, but if you would like to sponsor the show, go over to hankgarner.com. There's a link in the uh, top menu bar, and you can click on there, and we'll give you uh, some information on how you can support the show and get your product or service out in front of our large and diverse audience. Uh, we are growing by leaps and bounds exponentially, uh, as a matter of fact. So have got some fantastic shows for you coming up this month. If you'd like to be a part of it, go to hankgarner.com and click on the link there. Uh, there's also links where you can send us feedback back on the show if you'd like to uh, tell us what you think or comment. Uh, those are always welcome. There's a link there. And if you would like to be a guest on the show, uh, there's a link there as well. So HankGarner.com is your place for everything. Uh, find all the shows, find ways to communicate with us, and uh, thank you for listening. Today, I've got two back-to-back -back interviews with uh, Faith Thomas and Javin Bonds. Uh, Faith is a, uh, is a mother who wanted to write a children's book that would help communicate uh, to her children. And this is a really uh, fascinating interview, uh, and I think you're going to really love it. And also Javin Bonds, uh, a young man who has some health challenges that he was faced with, and instead of you know doing what so many of us do and, and just kind of giving up, uh, he's set to work to get out as much writing and uh, and you know to leave an indelible mark on the world uh, while he had time to do that. I think you're going to love this really inspiring interview. So uh, I hope you enjoy this back-to-back -back show. Thanks for listening. Well, thanks for joining me again for the Author Stories podcast, where I bring you the story behind the stories and the storytellers. Today, I'm really excited to bring you a show uh, with Faith Thomas, who is a really unique author in that she writes children's books. We don't have a lot of children's books authors on the show, and uh, that's something that I really uh, want to shine a light on. And uh, so welcome to the show, Faith. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to have you. Um, I begin each show with the same question, and that question is, what is your first memory of wanting to be a writer or a storyteller? My first memory is um, reading to my kids, and I realized I had to do something different. I wanted to put something positive that my kids could relate to 30 years from now. I love that. Um, you you have a uh, a background uh, in working with children, not only your own, but uh, professionally, don't you? Yes. I have um, a daycare. I'm a daycare provider, and um, I've been working with kids for quite um, a while. Yeah. So in that, uh, in, in not only being a parent, and I'm a parent too, and, and we... Uh, you know, we have bookshelves uh, full of books that we've collected, uh, you know, as our children, uh, you know, have aged. And, you know, there's uh, – you can tell when uh, when a, a book uh, written for children is really um, – you can tell the ones that work and the ones that don't. And working with children like you have, as well as having your own, I'm sure that you've gone through lots and lots of material. Uh, did you see a need uh, in that area where, you know, I, I think 
you know, there needs to be something else in this space uh, yes. that I could lend myself to. Yes. I wanted to, um, where I found the need was I found that being a daycare provider, you have to make sure that you're putting positive things like teaching the kids to eat healthy and to understand at an early age, what do you want to do with your life when you grow up? What are your plans? You know, um, we only have 18 years to really get them in gear, and I know it's young when I tell you my kids are under five, but just <laughs> dressing up dressing them up with costumes and just preparing their mind. I feel like we have to mold them and shape them. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And, uh, and, and there's, you know, um, and these, these early childhood books make a lasting impression. Uh, you know, uh, you know, it's someone in his mid forties. Uh, I still remember some very first picture that I got. I agree. The first storybooks. Um, what kinds of, before we kind of, dig into that a little deeper. Um, what kinds of things did you like to read when you were younger? I love the three little pigs that huff and a puff and a blow your house away. Or I love the Disney <laughs> books that are still modern today, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, when and you I were love in school. picture books. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yes, and I love the picture books and um, just thinking about, like, when I was a kid, I just love the whole process of everything um, has to do with now, you know, get ready for the weather, what do you need in life, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, in school, did you ever see yourself as uh, as being someone that would, uh, that would become a writer or, you know, that, uh, uh, that would share in this way with others? No. I thought I wanted to be, uh, I, want, I knew I wanted to be rich, but now that doesn't matter um, as much as loving people and, and getting the feedback from my kids. Um, in school, um, I wanted to be a doctor, um, and it's crazy because the characters are all lining up to that, to being a doctor. That's crazy. Oh, I love that. I love that. Uh, what part of the country did you grow up in? I grew up in Los Angeles in California. Oh wow. That yes. uh, Yeah. Uh you don't live there anymore though, do you? No, I'm in Maryland now. I'm in um Maryland, Germantown, Maryland. Wow. And it's that's, quite uh, different. <laughs> yeah, that's that's literally the opposite sides of the country, isn't it? Yes. Uh, and I grew up in South Central California and now it I mean, we get all the seasons in Maryland. I mean, we get the snow, <laughs> the rain. <laughs> we get the hot summer. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, that that's uh, that's as different as it can be, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So, but I love so it what over brought there. you? What brought you from the west coast to the east coast? My husband. He um, he found a job over here, and we just rode it out with him. Nice, nice. Uh, so how long have you been uh, in the daycare business? I've been doing this for at least six years, but I was a nanny prior. Uh, when you decided to write children's books, uh, what was the, the idea and uh, kind of how did you get started doing it? Um, the idea was to get a book out that um, – my children could relate to it, and what got me started was my son and my daughters asking so many questions. They always had a question for everything. Like, Mom, why is the sky blue? Mom, why is the grass green? And just so many different things, you know. I felt like Albert Einstein, but the only problem was I didn't have all the answers. <laughs> <laughs> I can completely relate. So, you know, that, that, uh, you know, leads you to a path of discovery with your kids, you know, well, let's, uh, let's find out together because I know that was, uh, something I've done with my kids. They, they always ask questions and they ask the kind that, you know, you cannot easily come up with an answer for. Uh, but that's something we've always done is sat down and said, well, let's, let's find out together and, you know, turn it into a learning process. Um, 
I have never been brave enough to take that learning process and make a book out of it, though. Um, so what was the um, uh, kind of what was the, the motivating factor that made you go, well, you know, I, I think I should maybe start a line of, of books? You know, um, my son um, was asking, like, why is um, Granny taking all these pills? And I just wanted him to understand that those pills she's taking, you know, not blaming anyone, you know, you can become a diabetic, you know, born with different things, you know, people that are pregnant are already having kids and they already have that disease. But I wanted him to understand if you eat healthy, you can prevent a lot of things from happening you, from you becoming a diabetic. And I wanted him to understand that that disease um, can cause you to have heart failure, to lose your eyesight. It's like a lot of things that can go wrong. So I just kind of wanted him to understand, even if you don't become a diabetic, that you have to understand what it is and you have to treat yourself with love and care by exercising, drinking water, and taking care of yourself. And you also need to take care of yourself by educating yourself, always reading, always learning, and that was my spark. That, that's great, and uh, you, you know that the first book that you put out is is focused on diabetes, and uh, that is a it's become you know, an epidemic in our country, and I, I love that uh, you know that you use that as a conversation point uh, with your kids, and then turn that into a, a conversation point with other kids. Uh, what has been uh, some of the feedback that you've gotten from the book? Oh, I mean, I was on the Channel 9 News. I was so happy. I mean, it's just so much. Um, my family and my friends and churches and the mall and um, my gym, like everywhere that I go, people are um, are opening their, their doors to me and just being very, you know, um, insightful and just um, giving me great feedback, telling me that this is a great book, and I just – I'm just happy just for the experience, and I'm happy that I was able to put something out in the world that is positive, that can motivate our kids. Yeah. Um, did you do the illustrations? Yes, I got all of that done. Yeah, they're, they're fantastic. It's it's a great looking book. Um, did you did you kind of guinea pig it uh, on your kids as you were writing it to to kind of see what worked and and what didn't? Well, yeah, I wanted it to look just like them and, like, the part where my son was stuttering in there. Because sometimes he gets so anxious and so excited that he starts stuttering. And I'm like, take your time. Think about what you're going to say. So I wanted to be like our characters. It's it's coming from my family, my um, insight, my eyes, what I see, what I feel, and other parents can relate to that because a lot of times your kids are asking all these questions and you're just like, where do I start? How do I, how do I make sure that I'm giving good information? I don't know. Did you show the book to them as you were writing it? And um, uh, kind of what kind of feedback did your kids give you as you were putting it together? Oh, they are in love. The first thing that made them be um, really, really happy, I mean, they're screaming and shouting. They always want to hear this book. Their names. I use <laughs> their names in the book. So they were like, oh, my God, darling. They were like, that's darling. I'm, you know. Um, kids get excited for the smallest things and just to give them that joy in books. And they already love the library. I feel like I just, you know, I could just jump high in the sky right now. I just feel good. And I like putting things out that make me feel good, you know. Yeah. Um, did you uh did you decide to self publish uh being the best you? Um, no, it's not self published, but it is published. <laughs> Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, how did you go about getting when you had the idea for the story and then you started putting it together? Uh, how did you, you know, get the book out to the world? I think uh, a lot of people are maybe a little intimidated uh, by children's books because it's an entirely different market. And, you know, like like once you've got the the book written, kind of what do you do with it to get it out to the world? Now, that's the hard part. Writing the book is the easy part. The hard part is marketing. Yes. You have to understand that if you do not market this book, it will not go anywhere. You have to get on every 
I mean, everything that matters from the Internet, really the media. You need to get in tune with media, 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 from the social media to the TV, television media, to just getting out there, even on the podcast, the radio stations. You have to really sell your book. The, the writing is just like a step in the door. You have to get out there and just like um, get a lot of um, reviews. Um, I mean, I've been doing everything from USAA reviews. Everybody that matters, you have to look it up YouTube and find out everybody that matters and get in their doors, like knock on their doors, email them. Just make sure that you're getting out to the, um, to the mainstream, basically. Right. you got to have your hustle on all the time. Uh, everywhere you go, you need a card. That's you right. Need, you have to tell people what you're marketing. I mean, I'm no longer um, Faith Thomas. I'm Faith Thomas being the best you. <laughs> that's, that's right. That's right. Oh, so how do you, um, how do you, but, and that, this is an interesting thing because your market uh, is uh, small children and small children don't buy books typically uh parents buy books or educators buy books or librarians or um you know churches and and things like that so how do you become a person of influence uh to the people that buy the books while also maintaining the ability to communicate with the younger ones, which is who you want to in the first place. You know, I, I guess there's a, uh, there's definitely different hats you have to wear. You have to wear your creative hat, uh, and where you're communicating with the small ones. And then you have to take that hat off and you have to put your marketing hat on where you're marketing to the adults that will pass this book along to your ideal audience. So it's, it's like an extra step there that a lot of other authors don't have to go through. Yes, it really is. But then when you think about it, look at Walt Disney. Disney, um, if you see, his whole theme was a little Mickey Mouse, you know, and everybody is going there. Every year they're going up on the prices. You know why? Because the kids see it on TV, which makes them more popular, and they're bugging their parents. And guess what? As they bug their parents, their parent is going out there putting a smile on their face. So me, I'm not just going to the kids. I'm going to the parents and the grandparents and anyone that is interested in living a good life. For everyone, it's a different pitch. I mean, you will not pitch the kids the same thing you will pitch the um the adults, but you want to make sure that everybody understands the concept of healthy living, healthy lifestyle, and it's it's really a, a family based book. Like when you're in the kitchen cooking, thinking about think about um, how you can do it together with your kids, you know, so they understand that that bell pepper and that extra um, cauliflower, or that extra broccoli, is helping them. Is giving them what they need to nourish their body. Right, and uh, and what kind of feedback have you gotten from from other children? Um, uh, you know, have you when you see a, a child read the book and they've never uh, maybe they don't know you and uh, don't really know your story, but when you see that light go off, like your book has connected with them, uh, what is that feeling like? It feels great. Well, the one way, like when I do the library sessions, I have everyone jump up and down. Do you understand that your legs, in order to jump up and down, you need legs, you know? So you have to, like, relate to them and understanding that you have a body. If you want your body to work, you have to put water in it. You have to put good foods in there. If you're putting bad foods, not only are you going to be obese, but you're also going to have a lot of problems. And certain foods, like my mom used to tell me, carrots make your eyes pretty. So we have to continue to give them things that they can understand and that they can relate right, to. Right, right. Um, are you planning more books in the series? I don't know. <laughs> um, at this moment, I would say yes, but I haven't started writing another book, and I don't even know where to go because, you know, I've been getting so much great feedback from this book. I mean, I would have to start all over <laughs> to think of something different. 
You know, I want the same feedback. You know, you want to always go up after you get that peak. You want to make sure you get another peak. Right, <laughs> right, absolutely. Um, how did you go about getting this book published? Uh, after you had it all written and uh, you got the illustrations uh, done, what, how did you, uh, you know, get it out to the world? Um, I went through a company called Ex Libris, X L I B R I S, um, and they just got everything out there. I mean, it was a pretty. Um, <laughs> yeah, actually, they did my marketing. They got everything out there on the shows, and I just love it. Nice, nice. Uh, well, Faith, where can people find you if uh, if they're interested in the book and and maybe they got little ones in their life and and would like to get a copy or you know a box of copies into classrooms or you know uh, organizations? Where can they find you to do that? You can go on Amazon. You can go on Barnes and Nobles. Um, you can also go to X Libris X L I B R I S dot com. You can go to Faith at Faith Thomas Arthur. Um, I'm just everywhere. <laughs> um, you can go to my email, uh, Faith Thomas thirty two at gmail dot com. Faith F A Y T H. Excellent. Uh, well, Miss Faith, you're doing fantastic work, and uh, we hope you uh, have much success with it. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. <laughs> well, thanks for joining me again for the Author Stories Podcast, where I bring you the story behind the stories and the storytellers. Today, I'm really excited to bring you a show with Javin Bonds. Uh, Javin has a fascinating story. And if the writers out there, if you have ever felt like, uh, you know, you just can't get the motivation uh, to do what you want to do and, uh, you know, get those stories out of your head. Uh, I think after listening to Javin today, you might have a little bit different attitude. Uh, welcome to the show, Javin. Thanks, man. How you doing? It's good to be here. Uh, glad to have you. Um, I begin each show with the same question, and that question is, what is your first memory of wanting to be a writer or a storyteller? Well, uh... I actually didn't want to be a writer until uh, after I started going legally blind. I started going legally blind in January of 2010. And I got Dragon Natural speaking to uh, write on the computer or type because I can't really see the keyboard. So I got that, and then I started listening to audiobooks. Because I couldn't read books. I started listening to audio books because I couldn't read or watch TV or anything. And my dad said one day, he said, uh, you've been reading all these books. You probably got a story in your head. And I said, yeah, I do. So I started writing a book then. It turned into Free State of Dodge. And I got it published in 2016. That's awesome. Um, the, there's there's so much to ask. I'm just gonna uh, first off, uh, um, you said you started going legally blind in in 2010. Um, what happened? Uh, well, I have Friedrich's ataxia. It's a form of muscular dystrophy. I've been in a wheelchair since I was 13 years old, and uh, I've I've never. Uh, really been able to hear good either i have bad hearing problems but i could always see fine until 2010 then it just started i just started losing it and i couldn't read anything probably in 2011 i was it was that bad progressing pretty quick wow wow so this is something that you uh you've had to deal with for for a lot of your life Oh, yeah. I've, I, well, I was born in Friedrich, Taxi, but I mean, I went in wheelchair until I was 13. Oh, wow. I Man. was a clumpy kid, and I always <laughs> tripped. Yeah. Well, well, me too, and I don't even have anything to blame that on. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you said you started listening to audiobooks a lot. Uh, were you a big reader before the, the thing happened with your eyesight? Actually, I wasn't a big reader. I had just, you know, uh, I read in school, in high school, of course. But I didn't read much until then. I could always just 
watch movies or TV and you know, it got where I couldn't see, so I had to entertain myself in some other way. Wow. Um, what kind of, you know, I, I think a lot of people really, uh, you know, take for granted the, uh, the, the, all the things that are in front of us all the time and, and we choose to, uh, you know, in, instead of reading so much or, or maybe pursuing, uh, writing, uh, like a, a lot of us want to do, it's so easy to just get distracted, uh, by TV and movies and, and all that stuff going on. Um, you, you know, what, what an, an interesting way to get into it. Uh, sometimes you, you never know what that trigger is going to be that gets you, uh, motivated to do something else. Yeah. <laughs> um, what sort of th- uh, audio books were you, did you start listening to? Uh, I started listening to like James Wesley Rawls and and uh, Glenn Tate, but I got into zombie books like uh, Mark Tufo and Sean Chester and all them. Mark Tufo is actually the original inspiration for my uh, zombie apocalypse series. Really? Uh, yeah. what, did you were you really into like zombie apocalypse stuff uh, before your your eyesight started going? Uh, well, I had seen Dawn of the Dead 28 days later like everybody else, but I, it wasn't like something I did every day. I didn't watch those movies or listen to those, read those books or anything. Right, right. Uh, what was it about, uh, those, uh, those books and, and Mark Tufo specifically that really captured your attention? I just, those books, I, I was reading Zombie Fire too. And I actually had to stop the audio book because I was laughing so hard. <laughs> and I thought, holy shit, I've got to do something just like this. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, when you, uh, so I, I think I read on, on your website that you were, you were going through like two or three audio books a week, weren't you? How many did I listen to? What did you say? I, I said, um, I think I read on your website that you were going through two or three audio books a week, weren't you? Yeah, at least. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, were you getting them from uh, Audible? And uh, I, I bet you were just racking up all kinds of uh, uh, audio book downloads. Yeah. Uh, yeah, usually on Audible. Gotcha. Um so when you decided that, uh, you, you know, you said you had that kind of laugh out loud moment and you wanted to write, uh, for yourself, how did you, or I think you, you even said earlier that your dad came home and challenged you, you know, you've been listening to so many books. Do you have a, uh, a story in you? What was your first reaction when he asked you that? Well, I've been, uh, listening to Patriots by James Wesley Rawls and my dad said, he said, uh, you probably got a story in your head. So I said, yeah, I do. So I started writing a uh, dystopian uh, post-apocalyptic type thing. Free save dodge. Got you. Uh, I think a, a lot of people would uh, would love to hear how you went about it. You, you had just lost your eyesight. Um, uh, you know, how do you come to the computer and start writing? Well, uh, I can... I'm legally blind, so I can just barely see. I've got my, my I use a 40-inch plasma screen TV for a monitor, and it's on high contrast and zoomed to like 480 resolution or whatever. It's huge. And I can barely see one word at a time, so I, I just load up Dragon and start saying what I want to type, and... It'll put it on the screen. Uh, how uh, how hard was it to get Dragon set up and and get it to where it was recognizing your voice and 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 you're like me, you know, you come from from the South and uh, for those of us that live in the South have a little harder time getting Dragon to, <laughs> to understand what we're saying. <laughs> yeah, it has a little bit of a. It, I have a pretty heavy set of accent, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it, it still has trouble hearing what I say sometimes, but I work around it. I, I hear you. Uh, for, so you you dictate uh, almost all of your book, or if not all of it, right? You you actually uh, you know 
speak it and uh and, and dragon you know takes care of transcribing it for you yeah uh is that uh is that a difficult process or, or it, does it ever feel weird uh that you're sitting there and you're 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 talking a book out um <laughs> does, does it ever feel weird you know the family's around and stuff like that and uh javin's just in there you know writing another yeah. book I'll be in my room and my brother, my brother and his wife will be over here with their baby and they'll be here for like six hours and I won't even know it because I'll be in there right. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Uh, so tell me about that first book that you wrote, uh, Free State of Dodge. What what was the inspiration for it and uh, uh, kind of what was the uh, what was the idea that made that the thing you started with? Uh, just uh. Well, pretty much Patriots by James Weather Rolls and I I use my hometown as a model for the for Dodge. Gotcha. Uh what was the what was the idea of the story though? Like what uh, uh what happens to Dodge? Oh, uh the uh like there's a uh cra- the government collapses and there's a uh National Guard unit that comes in and they're supposedly there to keep the peace, but they turn out to be something else. They try to enact martial law and everything. Oh wow! So it's a kind of got a uh, kind of a prepper feel to it as well. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, after writing that book, uh, well, first off, how long did it take you to write that first book? Uh, actually, it took me about three years, but we didn't get it published until 2016. Because uh, in December of 2015, I went to the hospital with a uh, 30 pounds of water weight and congestive heart failure and all that, and they told me I had six months to two years to live. So we kind of. I had to hurry to get that out, but since then, I'm actually doing a lot better, and the doctor said uh, that tablet doesn't apply. Wow. So so let me get this straight. You you got sick at the, the end of 2015, and you went to the hospital, and they told you that, that you only had a short amount of time to live? Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, you're, you're a relatively young guy, I think, aren't yeah. you? And uh, what... What did that do to your uh, kind of uh, your, your what, what did that do to you mentally? Like uh, I I I don't understand. I, I can't imagine what it's like to, for someone to say you have you know only a certain window to live. What what does that yeah. do to you mentally? Well, it just made me hurry to get stuff done. I knew that if I was going to go, I wanted to have my name on something when I died. So uh, I I already had free safe dodge wrote and I had uh at least two of the still alive books written. So I uh started publishing the still alive books at the end of twenty sixteen. Wow. So uh so after you wrote those first uh, that first book, you said you had two of the still alive books already written. So you, uh, after writing that one, did, did you just jump into the next book and start writing that other series? Well, I uh, started writing uh, Free Save Dodge in twenty ten, but uh, and I started writing uh, Still Alive in twenty thirteen. So uh, I kind of like just drug around and didn't didn't get around to publishing it but once i started publishing i've been writing a lot faster now yeah there's something about just kind of getting the the wheels turning isn't it once you get it in motion it's a lot easier to keep in motion isn't it yeah um you know, uh, well, first off, before I, I ask you this other question, what the, you said you had two of the still alive books already written. What uh, what are those books about? Well, uh, still alive one actually turned out to be still alive one and still alive two, and I had that done in 2015, 
And Zombies on a Plane is the third book. I wrote it as the second book, but uh, I actually had it finished in six months because I was dying, so I just wrote it as fast as I could. Man, uh, I I haven't made it to Zombies on a Plane yet, but I've read the first uh, Still Alive book, and it... Uh, it's funny. Like I was, I was not prepared for the level of uh, of smart aleckness, and yeah. uh, you know, it was. It's a lot of fun, you know. And I think um, some people that that shy away from you know the Zompak, uh genre yeah. uh, maybe don't understand that there's uh, you know that there's something in in writing stuff that's really dark and disturbing, um, and being able to kind of step back and laugh at it a little bit is uh you know maybe says something about us as humans and, and how we ought to approach life you know that uh, yeah. maybe not take things quite so seriously sometimes uh but it's a lot of fun uh, and i can tell in your writing that uh you, you know that that you're you're dealing with 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 dark stuff but uh but there's there's some light and some levity in it yeah well, uh, my zombies aren't the classical undead zombies. They're actually living infected. Gotcha. Uh, why was that important to you to, to kind of change the, the, uh, or, or take a different approach to zombies? Uh, why, why? Do what? I said, why so, would why was it important to you to uh, take a different approach to zombies instead of the oh, typical undead? Well, uh, you know, I just uh, read everything, all the zombie stuff, the classical Romero zombies, and I was just thinking, well, I've got to be a rich of a dog. Would do something different. Gotcha. Uh, so how long did it take you to kind of uh, come up with the world and, and the uh, kind of the reason the zombies are there? Uh, did you kind of work all that out in your head before you started writing it? Well, see, uh, the city I write about, Gardnerville and Marshall County, is actually where I'm from. I'm actually from Marshall County, and I'm going to go for all the time. And uh, there's a... The Columbus uh, Caravel ships come down the Tennessee River. Yeah, it's stopping Gunnersville. Okay. So I so I use the uh, Columbus ships as a model. Yeah, I I was wondering, you know, in the the first book opens with that, you know, he's he's kind of writing a journal and he's talking about the huh. the ships that uh, tell tell the listeners a little bit about that because uh, that was not something I was very. Uh, uh, very aware of what? What is the the Columbus ships caravel and and all that? What is that story? Well, they they've been coming through as long as I can remember, and I used to go down there a lot to see the ships when they would come through. And uh, in twenty thirteen, uh, the uh, Columbus ships were down here. They only come through like once every three years, so. Uh, I went down there and talked to one of the crew members, and she told me a lot about, like, the workings on the ship and how everything works. And and the, those boats are are, uh, are, are shallow bottom, uh, flat bottom boats, aren't they? Yeah, they're flat bottom so they can travel down rivers. That's cool. That's cool. And and yeah. so the the first book kind of takes place uh, around that, and uh, you have got kind of people playing as pirates, and uh, it, it's a it was a, a really neat setting. I, I really enjoyed what you did with it there. Yeah. Uh, so so after you got this news uh, that that you only had a certain amount of time to live, um, I, I think a lot of people would uh, would be depressed. And you know would would kind of go home and 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 feel sorry for themselves. I, I'm not sure how I would react to that. Uh, but for you, it motivated you, and 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 you said I've got to get stuff out, and I've, I've got to get my name out there. Um, was there ever a point where you, you kind of had a moment of self pity, and you know like uh, well this is just my fate. I'm gonna, uh, or, or did you just immediately go into action and say I've got to get this done? Well, I mean, I've been, I've, I've had to deal with this 
my whole life, so I've been depressed quite a few times in my life. And, you know, I was like, well, like uh, the uh, quote at the beginning of the first book says, uh, if if you don't want to be forgotten when you're dead, Rodden, either do something, either write something worth reading or do something worth the writing. So I knew I had to do something worth the writing. <laughs> and write something worth the reading. I love it. Love it. Um, so you, you came home, you got to work. What, how did you get that first book published? Uh, I self-published through Amazon. My dad uh, did all the format and everything for it. And, uh, she, she had Mark Tufo's editor edited the book. That's awesome. Um, and who did the covers for? You've got some fantastic covers. Uh, I don't know the dude's last name, but he's from the Philippines. His name is Christian something. He has a Facebook page, Covers by Christian. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, so you've got, uh, when you got Free State of Dodge out there, you had the other two books, uh, ready. Did you get them, uh, off to get edited and, and all that stuff as well? Yeah, uh, Zombie Lake was out in like December of 2016, and Zombie Island came out in March of 2017, and then uh, Zombies on Blaine came out in May, and I'm hoping to get either this week, this month, or next month, I'm hoping to get Zombie Oasis released. Oh, cool. Cool. How many books uh, do you have planned in the Still Alive series? Well, uh, right now I have 11 planned. So by the time I get there, it'll be like 75. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, since you write with uh, uh, using Dragon, uh, what is the editing process like? Like when you, well, when you send uh, it off to an editor and get it back... Uh, how do you go through that? Well, I, I see, I write it and then I go through and read it a bunch of times myself with Dragon. Okay. And then I have my mom read it out loud to me and she fixes like run right over sentences and stuff. And then I send it to beta readers and they read through it and correct like little stupid things like when it says it is his or something like that. Right. And then it sends it to the editor and she goes through it and writes comments and stuff, sends it back and it takes two or three months altogether to get it edited. Yeah. Well, that, that's probably a good thing though. You've got, uh, in that amount of time, you've got uh, lots of people around you that are, are, are uh, Picking things out and noticing them and, and helping uh, to kind of shape it up to the to the place that that you originally wanted it to be. I'm sure. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, it sounds like you you've really got a supportive family uh, that that helps in in just everything that you do. Um, but what, kind of what have they thought about uh, this writing career that you uh, came into? <sighs> What about? I, what, what is your since your family is so involved in in the whole process with you? Uh, what do they think about your writing career that that's taken off? Oh well, they're pretty supportive of that. I mean, uh, originally, uh, my dad has been working writing his own book for a while, and I started writing one. I well. Well, when I started dying, we just got it published just to go in and get my name out there before I died. But now that uh, now that I have more time, they're still supportive and they help me get everything done. Yeah. Uh, what are your plans uh, going forward? Well, uh, I've got the uh, next what six or seven books planned and I'll probably have more after that and I would like to eventually go back and uh, re-edit and maybe re-release Pre-State of Dodge 
I'm going to make that a trilogy. Yeah. Because I can... I could write more if I had a story. Awesome. Um, are you still uh, listening to that many audio books a week? I wish. I really don't have time. To, I mean, it's it's hard to believe when you hear me say I don't have time to read because I'm doing something else, but I really don't have time to read. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> Well, Javin, uh, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. I, I uh, wish you continued success, and we're going to send everybody over to go check out uh, your books. If uh, if there's somebody out there uh, that wants to be a writer uh, but is uh, maybe scared to start or doesn't believe in themselves, uh, do you have any advice that you would like to give them? Yeah, uh, when you uh, – if you think the story – just write it down, and uh, you can get it self-published. Just go for self-publishing. Gotcha. Because go, going for a traditional traditional publisher takes forever. <laughs> You'll never get it. And, and when you're when you're in a time crunch, being in charge of your whole process means a lot, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Javin. Uh, is there any anything that you would like to say to people about uh, about staying motivated uh, to keep writing every day? Well, uh, you know when it it's you just have to uh, write because if you don't if you don't have your name on something when you're gone, you're nothing. Got you. It's all about leaving something behind. Yeah. yeah. What? It's all about being remembered. I agree. I agree. Uh, Javin, where can people find you uh, online if they uh, if they want to follow along and uh, and pick up your books? Uh, they can go to Amazon to buy the books, and I've got the uh, official fan club on Facebook and my author page, and. Uh, and I've got a personal page, too. Awesome. I'll link it all up in the show notes, and we'll send everybody to see you. Uh, Javin, thank you so much for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks for listening to the Author Stories Podcast. For more great author interviews like this one, go to hankgarner.com and dig through the archives. There's something there I know you'll love. 